Hey crafters, so I saw this idea online to make an adorable abstract painting of bubbles and I wanted to give it a try and share my process with y'all. For my painting, I'm using this one I got on sale for about 35 cents from a dollar store. The first thing we need to do is paint the background of our canvas a solid color. Since I need to cover up the design that's already on my canvas, I decided to do a black background using my favorite paint. I absolutely love these apple barrel acrylics because they are so affordable and they clean up great. I also added a little of this random blue paint, but it didn't show up much. I tend to not be neat when I paint, so I just squeezed some paint onto my canvas and went at it with a paintbrush. I also painted the edges of my canvas for a more finished look. And naturally, I squeezed out way too much paint and got it all over my work table, but hey, it cleans up really easily with water. I used my paintbrush to scrape the excess paint off the canvas and into a little jar with a lid so I can use it for another project, and then I set my canvas outside in the sun to dry. While that was drying, I cleaned my table and was really wishing I had put something down to avoid the stuff, but at least it came off the table. Once my canvas was dry, I was ready to paint the bubbles. To create the bubble shape, I'm using a variety of round containers and lids of different sizes. I'm making the outline of my bubbles white for the greatest contrast, but you can use whatever color you want to use. So to make the bubbles, I put some white paint on a plate, again using an acrylic apple barrel paint, and this one happens to be gloss. Then I dipped the edge of my lid into the white paint, making sure I got paint all along the rim, and then I pressed it onto my canvas like a stamp. I didn't get paint on one side of my circle, well, circles don't really have size, but you know what I mean. But honestly, I like the imperfections of these circles. Like there's still a perfect circle shape, just the line itself isn't perfect and a little thicker in some spots and thinner elsewhere. I did go back and fill in that side by stamping the lid again, and then I repeated the process with my other size containers to make bubbles all over my canvas. Personally, I really like the way they look when overlapping, and I wish I had done more overlapping bubbles, but it is what it is. I was careful and mindful of my placement to make sure my painting would look balanced. But once you like the way your bubbles look, it's time to add a little pop of color to create the highlights. I'm using this metallic red that's basically iridescent pink, a bright green, and some red that came with the canvas. You only need a tiny bit of each color, so don't squeeze out as much paint as I did. I had a lot of excess left over. Also, I'm using a fine tip brush for this step. The basic idea is to get just a smidgen of paint on your brush and then paint little curves along the inside of your bubbles to create highlights as you see me doing here. To keep it somewhat realistic, I place the same color highlights in roughly the same spots on all my bubbles. It's not exact by any means, but with this sparkly red for example, I put it along the top left and bottom right of all my bubbles, and this would just create a more natural look. Another note is you can go heavier with your paint or you can almost dry brush it like I'm doing. Personally, I find the results to be more forgiving if I use less paint and really work it into the canvas, but a thicker stripe of paint would create a different bold look and that might look really cool as well. And then from here on out to finish up the project, I'm just painting little curved shapes all over inside my bubbles. Once I finished with the metallic paint, I added some green highlights and just blended those into the canvas instead of leaving them super crisp. And then last of all, I added some red highlights. Again, I positioned the green highlights in roughly the same spot on all my bubbles, and same with the red highlights. In the end, I also dry brushed a little bit of the metallic paint closer to the centers of my bubbles, just to give a little more dimension. Something I do recommend for this step is you take one of two approaches, either take the less is more approach and stop after just a few lighter colors, or else go super intense with the highlights. Mine looked really cool after just the metallic highlight, so I totally could have stopped there and it would have looked epic, but I knew I wanted more colors in my painting, so I kept going. When I hit the point of having two colors on there though, kind of that medium level of highlighting, I didn't think it looked as good as when I had just one. So if you're adding highlights and hit a point of, ah, I should have stopped before this round of highlights, just keep going, keep layering up those highlights even more and you will get it back to looking awesome. So for me, that's why I kept adding more highlights and even added that metallic to the center because I felt like it looked a little off with just that medium amount of highlights. But once I put in all my highlights, my painting was complete. I think this is so cute and I love how easy it was. It's one of those projects where even if you mess it up, which I'm saying that with air quotes by the way, you can't see because I'm just voicing over, but even if you mess it up, it still turns out good. The trick is to just keep adding highlights until you are happy with it and then call it a day. If you're not happy with it, it means you need to keep adding highlights. And worst case scenario, you can just paint over your project with the background color and start over again. 
So make sure you have fun with this project and I hope you enjoy it. If you want to try this project or even if you just think it looks neat, be sure to hit the like button on this video to let me know. Catch you next time and happy crafting!